morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Winchester. Today is February 5th, 2014, and we want to thank you for starting your morning off with us. We have some big shot birthdays. We have baseball Hall of Famer Hank Aaron, who is turning 80 years old. Football Hall of Famer Roger... S okay, I'm going to totally forget <laughs> his name. Stauber? Stauber? I feel like this guy is really famous. I'm so sorry. Uh, but he's turning 72. Barbara Hershey from Hannah and Her Sisters is turning 66. Also turning 66, we have Christopher Guest from Best in Show. We also have Tim Meadows turning 53. Jennifer Jason Lee from Backdraft is 52. We also have Laura Linney of The Big C is turning 50 as well. And then we also have um, Duff McKagan of Velvet Revolver of, um, and Guns N' Roses is turning 50. We have Bobby Brown turning 45. And Darren Chris from Glee is turning 27. So those are our Big Shot birthdays for today. If today is your birthday, then we're wishing you a happy birthday as well. And then we also have um, a couple of It Happened Days I'd kind of like to mention because okay. we all know that the Super Bowl uh, was last weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, in 2006, the Pittsburgh Steelers won a record tying fifth Super Bowl with a 21-10 win over the Seattle Seahawks. Okay. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And that was in 2006. And then just for some little special events here, we have today is Digital Learning Day, Chocolate Fondue Day, Weatherman Day, and Whipped Cream Day. So um, I don't know how helpful that is to <laughs> some people, but that's kind of interesting to know. And in some more, kind of a little bit of Super Bowl news, for the fourth time in five years, the Super Bowl has set a record for the most watched television event in U.S. history, drawing 111.5 million viewers. The game also set standards for the most streamed sports event online with 24.9 million tweets, the biggest U.S. live TV event on Twitter. Uh, the Seattle victory eclipsed the 111.3 million viewers who watched the 2012 Super Bowl between the New York Giants and New England Patriots. Until last year's game dipped slightly to 108.7 million, the Super Bowl has set rating records for the previous three years in a row. So this year beat out all the other years, or? Uh, it, it looks like it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting from it. Well, that's, uh, I guess, kind of strange. Wasn't it last year where there was the blackout during the Super Bowl? I don't know if you remember it was, that. It was last year, two years ago. It was, it was recent, though. Yes. So I'm guessing maybe they lost some like viewings towards that. But maybe. then you would think that Twitter would go crazy if yeah. something like that happened. Oh, yeah. I, I do remember that. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the last one, though. But everybody's but constantly tweeting during the big games oh yeah. like the Super Bowl. During the big game. And I also want to uh, say that, I remember a lot of people were saying about Floyd Mayweather kind of betting. Well, he came out and said it was for a, it was good for a laugh, but Mayweather said that none of, none of that is true. On Monday, the boxer issued a statement putting an end to the Super Bowl bet rumors. Cl congratulations to the Seattle Seahawks for winning the Super Bowl. For record, I did not bet $10 million on the Broncos. As a matter of fact, I didn't bet at all. I can't control what rumors are put out there, but good or bad pub publicity keeps me relevant. The only thing I would bet $10 million is on myself. Confidence, yeah. So, um, But yeah. no, that was a really kind of funny photo floating around kind yeah. of the internet of, you know, like a headline that he bets 10.4 million or yeah, something, it was something like that. Yeah, something like that. And then him looking all stressed out during the game. So um, I don't know where they got those photos from. I don't, I don't know if that either. was actually from the game or not. But I, probably not, though, because he was wearing like a short sleeve shirt, and it was probably was like 30 degrees at the game or something. Yeah, but like then that. If, if, if he was up up top, you know, in some of the yeah, really that's nice. True. Which he would be. Yeah, so he could probably pull off short sleeves in there. Yeah, well, speaking of that, let's go ahead and take a look at this week's weather in Winchester. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it is pretty cold. Not too bad. Not in, like, the single digits that we've been mm -hmm. seeing in previous weeks. We do have a little bit of percentage, um, like, a slight chance of some precipitation going on into the weekend, maybe some snow. I know originally there was this crazy rumor going around. Um, who knows if it's actually going to happen, but... Uh, I've heard from several different people and even said uh, I've heard that it was said on the news that we could be getting like 12 to 11 inches of snow I don't something believe it. extreme like that so um, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen this week at all but you know who knows for the future because this is supposed to be one of our craziest winters and so right. far we've experienced a little bit of it but mm -hmm. um, 12 inches would be insane that'd be that would be a lot I think our eighth grade year, maybe fresh freshman year, freshman year was the most it had snowed in a mm -hmm. while. C yeah, right. Because a couple of years back we did have that really nice white Christmas, mm -hmm. but it was n nothing close to twelve inches. It no. was I mean, you could make yourself a snowman, but not like yeah, a snowman. Snow yeah, we 
I just remember you can make snowballs, have snowball fights with snow left over, but mm -hmm. I mean, it just wasn't 12. I don't see us getting 12. But inches. I mean, I don't know, that would almost be like a state of emergency if, if ten, I don't think people would know how to act. Because yeah. I know that, um, you know, last week there was that big hassle in Alabama about mm -hmm. people getting stuck on the roads and things of that sort. So if we were looking at 12 inches, things like that would probably probably be Most happening. likely happen, yes. Yeah. So uh, fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. Plus, I know we're running sh short on our snow days. Yeah, we are. I think we all have like one or two left. I know. So fingers crossed that we have nice weather for the rest of the week and mm -hmm. continuing on into the future. And for those who don't know, February 2nd, the day of the Super Bowl, was actually Groundhog's Day. Right. So I wish we kind of had a verdict on that to see whether or not we were going to be having yeah, more I winter. Think, I think he... Er, dang. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. Six more weeks of winter. Oh, goodness. All right. So okay. fingers crossed that for those next six weeks that we'll be okay when it comes to 12 inches of snow. Hopefully yeah, not. Yeah, hopefully that. not. But we'll have more to wake up on Chester right after this commercial break, so stay tuned. St. Teresa's Outreach Ministry in Winchester, Tennessee is a private company categorized under social service and welfare organizations. STORM is a local non-sectarian, non-profit charitable organization providing services to those in need who typically fall through the cracks in this area of social services net. It is located at 900 South Shepherd Street in the Franklin County Annex Building. People in need are encouraged to pick up food supplies when available and to apply for financial help with security deposits for utility bills, rent, as well as medical expenses, gas, and other needs. To contact them, call 968-6 be a parent, not a peer. I need you to give me clear rules. I just want you to hear that you love me. Let me know you care. Ask me about my social life. Ask me about school. It's okay to check up on me. I might complain, but I really do want you to check up on me. Please see how I'm doing. I want you to be in my life. I want you to know I'm okay. Be a parent, not a peer. This message produced for you by the Franklin County High School Media Arts Class in collaboration with the Franklin County Prevention Coalition. Oh my gosh, what a loser. She's such a geek. lost. This dip is better than that dip. Young man, we received an anonymous tip about an underage drinking party last night at this address. When teens drink on your property, you're responsible. Parents who host lose the most. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. If you could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Welcome back to Lake Up Winchester. So, it turns out the rich just keep on getting richer. Mere hours after Paris Hilton was paid $100,000 to DJ in Atlantic City Sunday night, she won some big bucks at the blackjack table as well. Paris kicked off her, residen her residency at Harrah's uh, pool after dark with the blowout Super Bowl party, DJing for a sold out crowd, and sources say she got paid $100,000 for the job. But the craziest part was that she left the club and hit the blackjack table where she increased her night's haul by 50%, winning another $50,000. So. Hmm. And it's Paris Hilton, so you know she does it. Well, I mean, I wonder, obviously she's an heiress, right? That's mm -hmm. how she has all her money. Um, but I mean, other than that, I don't think she has like an actual job, right? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, she might do some more of the, these side little 
things that she gets paid a lot of money for just because she's Paris Hilton. Yeah. She's not as, um, I guess, in the spotlight now as she used to be. Right. The, the Kardashians have kind of taken over that place right, of being right, famous right. for no reason. But um, <laughs> she's, I see her every once in a while. Like, she was at the Grammys, and she looks exactly the same. Yeah. She's like 30 and looks like a Barbie or something like that. Yeah, she's just all... Yeah, she's yeah. Um, she's an interesting character, but that's kind of funny that you mentioned that she uh, kind of doubled her money there. Yeah, I guess celebrities are more risky with their money than what we think. Well, actually, yeah. not for the Floyd Mayweather guy. He just oh yeah, no, he because he he only gets paid like three times a year, I think. He, mm -hmm. he gets paid paid lumps right. amount of money, but he just has to be careful he doesn't go blow it all right all at once. I mean, he he has enough to you know spend on some really nice stuff. Well. But yeah, financial planning is very important, and that brings us to our next topic, Blake. All right. uh, Tennessee <laughs> high school students are learning real-world financial lessons without the pain of losing actual dollars. So it's a UT extension program statewide called On My Own, where teens pretend to be adults while they pay bills and things like that. Mm -hmm. So as Chuck Denny reports, recent changes of the program include teaching kids a skill that's needed in modern times. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. <laughs> what about three? So. Three thousand. <laughs> This young lady, somewhat reluctantly, just bought a car. Needing wheels to get to work, she must now budget for a vehicle. It wasn't a real purchase, but a simulation for students at Lawrence County High School, part of a UT Extension program called On My Own. Teens fast forward to age 26, get a hypothetical job, bills to pay, and face the financial ups and downs of adulthood. I think it's important that they learn that there are a lot of demands on your money and that there are a lot of responsibilities and it gives them a very practical base for all of the decisions that they'll be making later. It's very beneficial. I would say anybody please do it because it's going to make you realize that you're about to hit life. <laughs> if you text a lot if you uh, talk a lot. Victoria Davis got some real world smackdown here. She was given the scenario of having a spouse who doesn't work. The cell phone bill, internet, and utilities. That got me. And then the groceries. I didn't know you spent that much on groceries. <laughs> This program has been around for a few years now, but recently went through some changes. Among the new features, students are given permission to barter and trade, a skill that's needed in today's world. Not only can students bargain for a better price, but they can also offer services. I'll mow your lawn in exchange for childcare, as an example. This economy has made people think differently. And in order to survive it, some folks have had to really rely on other people and they've had to find ways around some of the problems that they've had in the past that they can't just spend their way out of. Teens here learn that lifestyle is connected to occupation and income is connected to both. Organizers want kids to realize they may have to be creative in their finances. I was getting a second job because I'm not making enough money to live out in the real world pretty much. <laughs> More than 200,000 Tennessee students have gone through On My Own over the years, and the program will continue. Here, the pain is make-believe, but the lessons about money are very real. This is Chuck Denny reporting. I hope you guys enjoyed that clip. I know that we also have classes like that at mm -hmm. our school as well. We have financial planning and also personal finance, so those are also kind of right. go along with that. And I know there's other programs in Tennessee too because as a elementary student, we actually went to this place that you get your own checkbook and you go to a job and it's like it's its own little city inside of a, huh. a building and um, it's really cute but obviously it's for little kids. <laughs> right. You get your assigned job and you know you get your money and then you can go and spend your money in different places mm -hmm. all around but you have to balance your checkbook. So it's cool that they're kind of implementing things like that yeah. earlier on because it is pretty confusing, and it's yeah. going to have classes like this so people know how to handle their money. Yeah, I, I do feel like I've done something like that before. I don't know if it was here mm -hmm. or was somewhere else, but I, I know I have. I just can't remember if it was when we moved here or right. not. And it's a pretty cool idea, mm -hmm. especially for young kids who are like, ooh, you know, fake money, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So. Um, we also have another little story about the Super Bowl. Um, it's basically just stating that the Super Bowl is a lot more important than 
people kind of think it is, you know, the mm -hmm. outcome of it. Uh, a lot of it is used for, um, you know, it's the stock market. So a lot of people watch all the trends and things like that. That's why I guess a lot of people are into kind of like the animal bedding or, you know, the, the animals mm -hmm. that pick out certain ones. And I was watching on the news that a lot of animals got it right this year. Uh, there was a, like a panda and some mm -hmm. other ones that um, had picked the Seahawks. So I think that's pretty cool. But um, now that the Super Bowl is actually over, we're going to be moving on to the Winter Olympics. It's like the next big thing that's going to be broadcasted. And um, this is actually a story. I'm sorry, can you give me the pronunciation one more time? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Um, they're going to have their first Winter Olympian. So um, there's going to, his name is Luke Stein, I believe. And he is a 20 year old that will make history because he's going to be the first one from that country to um, participate in the Sochi Olympics. So that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Does it say what he's going to be doing at all, or is it just um, does it just say he's going to be in there? It just says he's going to be in there. It doesn't actually say what he's going to be doing. Um, that's where you would think it would. Yeah. But um, definitely look forward to seeing him from Zimbabwe. Yeah. Zimbabwe. Yeah, Zimbabwe, so, something like that. Yeah. I know. And uh, and some other completely unrelated news about that. <laughs> Katy Perry has reached a milestone on Twitter, and she has passed the fifty million dollar mark over the weekend, making her the most followed person in Twitter history. Behind Perry is Justin Bieber, who has 49.3 million followers. And then you heard all that stuff about, you know, the White House getting in on him possibly going back to Canada and everything. Yeah, with the there's 100, a lot of people that are trying to deport him back to Canada. Yeah, that's which kind of I don't know. That's extreme. I feel like there's going to be a meltdown. In I think I think now happens. it's actually reached 180,000. So I think it's it's increased even more right it's, it's probably like an online petition correct I'm, I'm not sure about that I'm, I would assume so since I mean you can't pass a paper around the whole country right but I think that's um, it's a lot of kind of anti Bieber fans who are yeah because well, I mean he's he was all he was doing all right and then he just started kind of getting into this trouble mm -hmm. and acting like it's nothing and just continuing to get in trouble mm -hmm. and then I don't remember if we talked about this or not before on here but I remember reading something about like there was a picture that was of him waving to the crowd. And he got arrested. And he like compared it to when Michael Jackson got arrested. Yeah, there was I saw that, that. There was that like comparison, and mm -hmm. people were just like, "Oh, yeah." So he's he's getting in some really, really, really boiling water. Well, it'll be interesting to see whether or not we'll have yeah, a little I Justin Bieber for the next couple of years. Uh, I think he's kind of been replaced, anyways, by like One Direction and things of that sort. I mean, he yeah. might be like the Jonas Brothers. Give him a couple of years, and no one will even remember him. So. He, he made a enough money for the rest of his life in those few years anyway. I don't know, didn't he have like a Lamborghini or something? Yeah. He, he could buy multiple he, ones. I mean, he, he was caught drag racing a lot of times. I mean, yeah. so like, like I said, he's, he's made enough money. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens with that. Um, another interesting story we have here, uh, it's a hammock cam, cam captures skydivers unconscious free fall. If there's a secret contest going on for the most terrifying action camera video the 25 year old skydiver james lee recently gave the skydivers in the mid-air plane crash a run for their money in a terrifying video captured the veteran skydivers helmet cam you can see him getting knocked out unconscious just seconds after jumping and then get rescued by fellow skydivers the video mm -hmm. is both horrifying and inspirational watching the unconscious skydiver plummet uncontrollably towards the ground arms failing on the edges of the helmet um, so it says that it's unsettling because of the fact that you know that he's not gonna yeah. pull the thing. And then it says, uh, but you see his friends rush to his side to help him and they also stabilize his body, but it says, and they deploy his chute in time, mm -hmm. so he's okay now. Um, but he's done over a thousand jumps and he says that this is not gonna hold him back from Right, I mean, it's, it's my dad has actually been skydiving twice and I mean, it looks like fun. He's always has an instructor with him. But I just know that, yeah, that was very good. He had those friends with him. It's kind of cool when they're skydiving because you're so far up that you can make yourself go faster mm -hmm. to catch up with him or slow down. Well, I mean, this is pretty cool that, you know, you have this kind of footage caught on camera and things like that. But when I read it, I'm thinking, you know, skydiving is one of those things that people always talk about how they want to do before they mm -hmm. die. It's on their bucket list, that kind of thing. This is giving me another reason, reason not to, to never do it because if I go unconscious, I my skydiver buddies aren't going to be catching me because I don't have any and um, I guess you could always be with the trainer. Yeah, my, both times my dad jumped he had an instructor right. like strapped with him. But so. what if he goes, you know, I don't know, that's just... I, yeah, that's a good point. I feel like they should make automatic shoots that like test like when it needs to come out. And then I'm sure that. that'll come out at some point, honestly. 
Now that you mentioned yeah, that, there's I'm probably some safety hazard for that too. There's a safety hazard with almost everything. Jumping out of a plane is a safety hazard. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So really quick, I'm not. There's not that much to read about this, but Disneyland Paris is getting a Ratatouille uh, themed restaurant. So there's some like French chef that's put in charge of this, and they're gonna make it like the movie Ratatouille, where I guess everything's gonna be bigger. There's gonna be like a chef running around chasing people, kind of, sort of, maybe. Hmm. I don't know if I read that right. Like. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, being chased around by an antagonist chef, Skinner, from the comfort of an oversized rat car. So and That doesn't I'll, sound like fun to me either. I, I've been to Disneyland Paris because obviously we lived o around there and mm -hmm. it was, it's a lot small. It's very, very small. I don't know, how, I don't know if it's grown much since, since I've been, but it's very small. There's only like a few really good rides. But that is, I mean, I guess pretty cool that they're going to make that yeah. happen. And you know if it's Disney, they'll go over and beyond and make it Oh yeah, fantastic. definitely. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. We'll have more to Wake Up Winchester right after this commercial break, so stay tuned. hero in you fuel up right and get energized be part of the greatest action movie ever the first movie that puts you in the action show us how you train and eat like an action hero join in at actionheroalliance.com my life it's full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. Ooh. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to Wake Up Winchester. So I now have some wacky but true. Some of these are actually pretty good. So two men seeking a refreshing bottle of Beck's Gold did not respond well when a German shopkeeper said he did not stock the brand. Instead of trying a different store or selling for a different brand of beer, the men seriously overreacted and set fire to the store. Luckily, nobody was hurt. The men ran off after setting the fire and managed to evade uh, capture. So, yeah, if they don't have your beer, don't set fire to the store. <laughs> um, in Flint, Michigan, a man stands accused of assaulting his ex-girlfriend. The woman told police the man kicked in her door and hit her with a glass plate and two cans of tuna. I so, mean, I guess when you're in that moment, you're just, yeah, you're just kind of throwing anything. stuff, I know. Um, but that's funny, you know, writing up like the police report, hitting your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another man, I don't know if this is the same man or not, in <laughs> Flint, Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, told police that his ex-girlfriend keeps going into his house without his permission to steal and break things. 
She apparently decided to keep the key to his house after they broke up. The man told police he believes his ex-girlfriend is coming into his home while he's at work, throwing eggs against the wall and pouring syrup all over the floor. Yep, it's an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is definitely an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> no one else would be that petty. Um, <laughs> but we also have another, this is kind of goes along with this, um, but I guess recently a former Boy Scout leader um, toppled an ancient rock formation in Utah's Goblin Valley State Park and another scout leader filmed it. It was, I guess, seen, put on the internet or something, and now they are being charged for a criminal mischief. Back in October, uh, they filmed it, and it was, I guess, like a giant um, like sandstone pillar, and so it was a really like um, big deal. And it was posted online, went viral, and then the pair and the third man, the person who um, filmed it, were heard like cheering as it toppled mm -hmm. over. And so um, they are all getting felonies for that. Wow. Yeah. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, uh, less than all don't push off any ancient rock formations. Y yeah. I, that's probably a good moral I mean, story. How, let's, let, it doesn't even state how they managed to do that <laughs> if it's an ancient rock formation. I don't. I mean, <laughs> that, I feel like these people just need to get a hobby. They're just. People scared. are just. People are crazy. But uh, it dates up to. It says. The huge pillar, um, it dates back to the Jurassic period, 145 to 170 million years ago. Wow, and these kids just kind of pushed it over? Yeah, I, so I, I feel like they're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> I don't know how much money you get charged when you ruin like a $100 Probably million dollar a thing. But, or a yeah, lot yeah. of money and very, very bad trouble. So that one's kind of, that one's not really on the wacky but true, but that no, one but that's kind of pretty wacky. Suit. Yeah, that is very, very wacky. <laughs> so I think that's all we have for today. If you have any comments, questions, or would like to be a guest on our show, you can email us at wakeupwinchester at fcrebels.com. Just to kind of update people on some stuff that's going to be going on. I know that this Friday there's going to be a career day at North mm -hmm. Middle School, and then I believe that the 20th there's going to be a career day at the high school. So those are just okay. some things that are going around. I know there's some more community news. We'll try to update you guys on that tomorrow. But for right now, I'm Casey Dennis. I'm Blake Shaw. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.